Americans food companies have had some truly magnificent runs this year. What with the possibility that Fed Chief Janet Yellen may something about, say something about an imminent rate hike when she speaks on Friday, what are we supposed to do with these relatively high-yielding bond market alternative stocks? Consider the case of General Mills, maker of checks, Pillsbury, Progresso, YoPlay, Betty Crocker, natural organic business they acquired with Annie's not too long ago, and of course the huge cereal business, think Cheerios among others, including Wheaties, which includes always the highlights of America's most superb athletes. Why not? All right, you know I've been a believer for a very long time for this because Ken Powell, who's the CEO, understands what the consumer wants, probably better than any of the packaged food people I deal with. That's why he's expanding the organic business, why he's removed the artificial coloring from all his cereals. But the fact is General Mills is up more than 20% year to date, and that's stunning. I mean, it is a slower growing packaged food company, and it's been roaring like some sort of red hot tech stock. In fact, the stock has rallied so much that its dividend now yields less than 2.8%. So can General Mills keep soaring, or is it time to turn more cautious after a magnificent run? Let's check in with Ken Powell, the chairman and CEO of General Mills, find out more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Powell, welcome back to Man Money. Hey, good, good to, to see, you, see you, Ken. Man. Have a Great seat. Yeah, thank you. Well, you know, uh, Ken, I've got to ask you put straight, straight, point, straight point blank. Okay, so I grew up eating this cereal. Yes. And Me I would have, all right, so I would have said, listen, you take the color out of it, you take, you take the artificial sweeteners, you take the taste, and I don't want it. It's been the exact opposite. It's doing great. How is that? It's How is that possible? L lots of people, I mean, more than half of our consumers said, you know, we'd prefer not to have these artificial flavors and colors, and so we took them out. But, and we took them out, and business, uh, business got better. But they, and why, we're just, why, we're listening to the consumer. Why didn't the taste go away? Because our R&D people, the people who formulate our products uh, around the world, are absolutely terrific. And it's very difficult to do, but, you know, this is how you insulate yourself. They have a very difficult problem, but they've done it. The product tastes great. Their job one for them is don't have people leaving the business because they don't like the taste. They know that, and they succeeded. I want people to understand, and we can use mathematical, we can use business, or you can just tell it point blank. The swing, what we call the delta between when you took the stuff, when you had it in, and you took the stuff out. Yeah. I mean, it happens pretty fast. Whether you're talking about artificial flavors, so we could, no, 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 no artificials, no. Yeah. Whether it was that or gluten-free Cheerios, we got the gluten out. We did that. We put them on the market. We started advertising. You see an almost immediate response. Consumers are, these are things are on their mind. They're listening. They hear that message. They go to the store. That's my product. And we, we see the results very, very quickly. The other thing, you, you have got at the cusp of a lot of things. You dropped something that's less organic, with Green Giant. You put a lot of money to Annie's. You also have emphasized snacks, yep. bars. Yep. How do you know all of this stuff? How are you so in touch with your customer that you're able to innovate and know what they want? It's been a real focus of ours. I and mean, we know, I've said many times, we're in an era of high change. Consumer values about food changing, changing. So the, our mantra in General Mills, listen, get out there, be in the kitchens, find out what people want today. So we've really focused on that. And we hear again and again, I want real food, cleaner food, simpler labels. I don't want, you know, I want artificials reduced, organic. I like organic. So we're just listening and we're then responding as quickly as we can. And that's led us to more snacks, more organic, uh, more protein, um, these kinds of things that we're just we're hearing again and again, this is what our consumers want. At the same time, you've taken out a tremendous amount of cost. Every time I feel like you have, you, there's no more cost to take out, yeah. you still can. Why is it that there was so much cost to begin with? And what's changed technologically to let you be able to do that? Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, 10 years ago, we saw inflation coming. Uh, and, okay, it's moderated a little bit the last couple of years, but we, uh, with uh, uh, emerging market demand for commodities, we said, look, it's going to be at least mid-single digits or more, very high, unprecedented. We said we have to get better at taking costs out. We can't just take price increases. So we just started to borrow ideas from all around the world, you name it, automotive industry, farm, you know, wh whoever had good ideas on cost taking, we brought them into General Mills, and we started to, you know, get these ideas to take them out. Some of it is, some of it is about reducing complexity. Right. Uh, in the business and fewer SKUs. Some of it is about just being smarter about pricing. Some of it is absolutely pure technology in the plants, right. smarter, better ways to make products. And we've used all of these ideas and, you know, and been very effective at doing right. it. And frankly, as you said, we've been on this run. I think there's still more to go. Uh, there are, it's, it becomes an innovation process. There's more we can do here. All right, now, one of the things you've just done, uh, it's all, by the way, in a fabulous analyst day. Anybody wants to know more? Uh, foundational versus accelerating growth bins. This yeah. is kind of heresy to some ways because yeah. we think of foundationals what we had when we grew up. Yeah. Well, you know, look, I, what we did was internally we were already being very, very clear inside of General Mills. Look, some of the brands we think have higher growth potential. Like, we're going to prioritize. Yeah. Organic is an example. Cereal is an example. Mm -hmm. Yo yogurt globally right. is an example. And we said, so we're going to 
uh, prioritize them for investment. Some of these businesses, fabulous businesses, we have very high shares, little less growth potential. We're going to ease off on those. Those are foundational. And so we made that, we made that uh, differentiation. So I talked about cereal and snack bars and yogurt as an example of, uh, of uh, 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 a growth brand. Foundational brands, uh, baking mix, right. uh, Pils Pillsbury. Pillsbury products. Wonderful business. We have very, very high shares, very profitable for General Mills. Going to grow a little bit less, uh, uh, you know, less rapidly, but still a very important business for us. So we're just managing the portfolio right. that way. We were doing it internally, thought we should tell the world that, look, this is how we're prioritizing. This is how we're thinking about the business. Now, one of the things that, are, that stock investors, the big portfolio managers, like is growth. Now, you do not have the hyper growth of a Facebook or, right. uh, or you know, of a Google, but, uh, but what you do have is huge cash flow. And you've been able to figure out what, how to buy back stock. One of the things that it also offer a great yield. Right. One of the things that you've been really amazing at is buying back stock. Is that because you recognize something that the market didn't? Well, how did you know to continue to buy? Because it turned out to be a great buy. Well, look, we have been, you know, pr fundamentally, we've been listening to our investors for many, many, many years, as long as I've been in this job, which is almost 10 years now. I mean, we know that people who buy companies like General Mills, look, we want to see that cash return. Right. As you know, some of them want the dividend. Some of them are very interested in share buybacks. But the, the point is, uh, we know you have very ample free cash flow, and we want to see that come back to us. And we just know that. We hear that repeatedly from our investors, and we feel that's a reason why they come into the stock, and we owe that to them. So we're very focused on that. We spent quite a bit of time on Investor Day talking about our focus on free cash flow, a target of returning 90%. Last year, actually, a little over 100%. So it's just it's a commitment that we have to our shareholders, and we've done it very, very effectively. I think our dividend is up 10% compound over the last five years. Uh, several billion dollars of cash, uh, you know, share buyback. So it's just part of the commitment that we have. Okay, well, one of your competitors, a yogurt company, down on bought uh, White Wave. That's yep. a company that you know I've I've liked for some time. Yep. Uh, you're now the third largest natural organic. You didn't feel the need to participate in that. Just feel like you can develop it yourself uh, using the Annie's labels. Look, we're constantly looking to see, okay. you know, where are the deals and where are, you know strategic opportunities for us really enhance our portfolio, create value uh, mm -hmm. for our shareholders. So we're always looking. You know, we didn't see it in that uh, particular opportunity. But, you know, if you look back what we've done over the last five years, very active uh, uh, building scale internationally. We, we, we acquired the international Yoplait business. Right. We acquired Yoki in Brazil. These are big businesses. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., as you've already said, very focused on natural and organic. We've acquired eight or ten businesses there. Right. So these are the kinds of things we've done, likely the kind of things we're continuing to do in the future if we find a bigger deal uh, that it fits with our portfolio and that um, uh, where we really see a clear path to value, we'll be interested. Okay, well, let me ask you then, because uh, Erwin Simon's been on the show a lot, and Hain, I know it's, yeah. you're not going to disclose that I'm yeah. bidding something here, but yeah. they faltered. Now, yeah. some people think they faltered, frankly, because of you, and yeah. because you have big brands, yeah. and you've come in and you've taken shelf space. Yeah. Is that the kind of thing that would be of interest? Well, you're right. I don't want to talk about individual <laughs> things. So, I mean, you know, look, we've, you've seen what we've done historically, right. and, and it, you know, it, it's got to be right for us. It's right. got to be something that fits, and it's got to be something where we really see the, how we can create value. You mentioned Annie's, right. a business where we paid, you know, a healthy premium for that. But, but we good. multiple ways to create value. We took cost out, huge uh, uh, expansion opportunities mm -hmm. in that business. That's been a very successful acquisition. So that's kind of, you know, the benchmark for us. We're looking for those kinds of things. All right, last question. 14 million kids. It's back to school. That turns out to be the season for General Mills, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's fantastic. We have, a, we have a fabulous uh, uh, a food service business. We have dominant shares uh, in, in uh, school cafeterias across the country. Our cereals lead, yogurt, very strong. Snacking, huge opportunity for us. Great focus over the years. We brought frozen food uh, into, the, uh, into the school lunchroom now. So uh, wonderful business for us. Um, uh, Double-digit profit increases right. over the last 10 years, and thank you for asking because uh, we don't get enough uh, recognition of the great success. Still, of that including business. the box top, uh, the box top charity that you do. I, I just I can't resist. I knew tricks are for kids. I have yeah. it memorized. Okay, Dude, would I memorize it now on YouTube, on Facebook? Because you do a lot online. Yeah, we're you know, it, 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 we're trying to get video on mobile devices, and so it could be on TV. It, you know, the, it, it, people talk about digital advertising. We're not talking about banners anymore. Right. We're talking about running our video, but on whatever device is in that person's hands. People are watching television programs on their phones. They're seeing our commercials right. that way. We don't really care whether it's TV, agnostic. the phone. The, it, they're totally agnostic. We, but we want them to see that 30 seconds of video. That's our focus. Well, it has been working. That's Ken Powell, Chairman and CEO of General Mills. You know, one of my favorite stocks since Mad Money began 
more than a decade ago. It's David Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.